Hi again and welcome to part 3 of the how to program series. I told you that we're going to move this cube via script in this episode, but I think it's better that we do one lesson before that. This lesson will be about variables because we need them to move this cube. So this episode will be about variables and the next one we're going to move this cube. So about the variables itself, what is a variable? A variable is a sort of space where you can save data to use them later. You don't only use them when you close the game, but throughout the game you will use them a lot. So when you have for example the bullets of your gun, this number is a variable. Also the health of the player is also a variable. So variables are used to store data. There are various types of variables. These include numbers, text, objects and even other scripts. There are many types of variables and you can even make your own variables. In programming there are few base types. The first one is an int or the full name integer. An int or integer is a whole number. You can have positive numbers and also negative. An example is minus 10, 5 or 268. To keep track of the amount of bullets you can use an integer. So for example if your gun has only 10 bullets you can store this number in an int. The second one is a float, or the full name floating point. This is used for decimal numbers, so it kinda looks the same as an int, but the int is used for whole numbers and float for decimals. Here you can also use the negative and positive numbers. An example is minus 8.5, 1.26 and 14.89547. You can notice that there's an F after every float. This indicates that the computer knows that it's a float. Whenever you use a float, you always have to use the F after the number. This is a small thing to remember, but you get easily used to it. The next one has nothing to do with numbers, but with letters, or text. This variable type is a string. Strings are used to save text. You can save a letter, a word, or even a whole sentence. An example is the word hello, and this is a string variable. The special about the string is that you need to use quotation marks to start the string and to end it. So strings are used to save text. The next variable type is a bool or the full name boolean. This is like a switch, it can be either true or false. It's kind of like a yes or no. So the only example we can give is something can be true or false. A good example for in game is to turn a light on and off. So is the light on, true or false. You can easily switch this variable, so it's often used for things that can have two states. The last variable type I want to explain to you is a vector of 3. We need this one to move our cube in the next episode, but this is actually a combined variable type. A vector 3 has 3 numbers. In scripting it's x, y and z. They're separated by commas. So you have 3 dimensions where you can place a number. It's mostly used to define a position in world space. So if you want to place an object, you can give it a x, y and z position and store it in the vector 3. An example is vector 3, then opening by a round bracket and also closing it by a round bracket. And between these brackets, you can have the x, y and z coordinates. In this example, 2, minus 8 and then we have a float number with the f, so 12.36. So in here we have 3 other variables to say so. 2 ints and 1 float. You can also have all floats or all ints, it doesn't really matter. But remember, when you use a float, you have to put the f after the number. If this is not fully clear to you, don't worry about it, because we're going to explain it in the real script in a moment. If you have kind of an idea what everything does, it's already okay. So let's do a short recap. We have ints, integers, they are whole numbers. We have floats, these are decimal numbers. Then we have strings, these are text variables, we have booleans, these can be true or false, and we have factor 3, these are three dimensional variables which contain an x, y and z coordinate. Let's go to our script and see how we can make them and use them. So we're back again in Unity where we have our first script, C sharp script. So open this one up, and here we have our script back again. So how to make variables? Actually, the first question will be where to make the new variables. 
variables are created inside your class because the class is a container of all the scripts. Most people create them above all functions. So we make some space here, we put some returns in here and we press the tab once to align the cursor with the rest of a script. So we've seen a few types of variables. Let's start with the first one, uh, int or the full name integer. Now the next question is how do we make the variable? First we define what kind of type the variable will be. In this case we use the int for integer. So we write int. Then press space one time. And now we have defined the type of variable we want to use. Now after the space we can define our own name for the variable. This can be anything you want but I recommend you to give the name so you can remember it very well. Let's use our variable for the amount of bullets we have. So we give our name ammo. So we know that this variable represents the ammunition. So, ne so now we have defined the type of variable and the name for the variable. This is everything to make a variable. So we can close this line with a semicolon. This one. Now we've created our first variable. At the start of a game I want to have 30 bullets. Just think about what you want. When I start the game I want to have 30 bullets. So from the sentence I know that in the start function we want to set the ammunition to 30. Because when the game starts this function gets called. So let's write some code over here. Press the enter key and then give the tab. Let's also indent this one with the tab and this one also. It keeps your code some cleaner. Then over here we want to set the amount of ammo to 30. The way we do this is we type the name of our variable, in this case ammo. And you can see MonoDevelop automatically shows us the possible names. So write ammo over here. Then you can press enter to close this window. And we want to set it to 30. So we give the space and we use the equal sign and another space and then we set it to 30. Also close this line with the semicolon. Now when the game starts the start function get called and then we set the ammo to 30. So if the game has been started this variable will contain the number 30. Let's save the script and go to unity. Press play and the game is starting. Now we can't see that anything has changed. And why is that? Let's quit the game for a moment. We've created a script, but it's not inside the game, it's only inside our project. To put it in the game, we have to apply it to a game object. So let's select our cube, because that's inside our game. And then we drag this script from our project onto the cube. Now you can see that the script is applied over here. When we now hit play, the script is executed, but we can't see it yet. A very nice trick that Unity has is that we can show the variables here beneath our script. The way to do this is go back to the script and we can make this variable public. The same way with the class, so it's public from outside this class, we can also do the same with the variables. So if we write public in front of a variable, you can see it's turning green to say it's a legit word. Let's save it again and go back to Unity. When it's done compiling, you can see that we now have a variable over here with a default value of zero. So if you make a variable public, you can see it in the inspector over here in Unity itself. So now we can test if the start function changes our amount. Let's quickly go to our game window and uncheck maximize and play. And then we press play. Watch this number and it's going from 0 to 30. So we know that our script works. If we now stop the game, it goes back to 0 because this is the default value of our variable. If you don't assign any value to it, it will always be 0 as default. So this is the way to make an integer and change it.